Thank you very much, sir. I think we can clap better for the King of Glory. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. He's awesome. He's glorious in holiness. He's fearful in praises. He's our God. He's our Father. He's our Redeemer. The only one of Israel. Glory be to his holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped him. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Oh Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. That day we give you all the glory. Jesus, we give you honor. Oh, we give you all the glory. Oh, we give you honor. Oh, Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you Father, we give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all the honor. We thank you because you are the Lord in our lives. We thank you because you are the God of this church. We thank you for your covenant. We thank you for your abiding presence. We thank you for where we were. We thank you for where we are. Daddy, we thank you for where you are taking us to. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for the entire region too. Thank you for men and women that you are using for the purpose of this gospel. Thank you for your grace upon this region. Thank you for protection. Thank you for preservation. Thank you, Father, for divine provision. Thank you for all the dreams you have given to this region. Thank you, Father, because you have been supporting all the way. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Daddy, we are gathered together in your presence again. We ask, oh God, that, Lord, you will move mightily in our midst. You have started already. Please continue with us. Glorify your name. As we go into this session, we ask, oh God, that Holy Spirit of the Lord will breathe upon us, breathe upon every hearer, and please, Lord, move your church forward. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, wonderful Father. In Jesus' awesome name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. Please be seated. You are welcome in Jesus' mighty name. I want to sincerely appreciate our Father and the Lord, our Mommy and the Lord in charge of this region, Daddy and Mommy also, for this privilege an opportunity of being here. We appreciate you. Let's please put our hands together. More grace, more strength, more anointing, more ability, more fire in Jesus' name. And um, the assistant pastor in charge of the region, Pastor Bode, Odeshola, God bless you, sir. Uh, more grace and more lifting in Jesus' name. All our senior pastors, that is our mommies, we celebrate you all. And the, uh, the, the choir, we say more grace in Jesus' name. And all of you say amen, more grace. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let me just stand on the existing protocol. If there's anyone that remains, I say that we welcome you all and God bless you. And those of us on the various centers, you are also welcome in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, just please, for the next few minutes, pay attention to the little thing that the Lord will have for us. 
I'm going to discuss on the vision, the RCCG vision 2032, vision 2032, that is a 10-year plan, growth plan of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, given by the DGO as a matching order to everybody in RCCG to attain. And I want you to please pay attention as we discuss this vision. It talks about explosive and expansive growth model for this church. And uh, as I continue, the, the media will be projecting this, um, this vision for us. So you may not be seeing my face, but you will be seeing the, uh, the projection on the screen. Um, as we continue, because of the, because of the, limit, the limited time that we have, uh, what is the biblical foundation for this vision? Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15. He said, Lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. To thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. What God is saying is that wherever we are today, we can look around and possess our possession. Where we are today is a state of stagnation. For the past few years, and um, I'm talking with the workers and ministers in LCCG. I want you to know that there is a lot for us to do. The attendance of the church has stagnated for some years. We are not growing. The number of parishes are multiplying, provinces are multiplying, but the attendance is not growing. Meaning that something is wrong somewhere. And when you look at us and we feel that, okay, we have arrived. When that the geo kept on saying that we have not even started. Attendant that is less than three million. We say we have arrived. Even in Nigeria alone, we have 200 million people or over. And we don't even reach three out of 200. And we are boasting everywhere. I'm a member of our CCG, I'm a worker, I'm a pastor. We have arrived. Nobody is involved in evangelism again. We are just comfortable doing whatever, doing church, coming to church and going out and counting on our testimonies and counting on, on our achievements. But what concerns God is souls. Souls being won into the kingdom of God. And that is the reason why Daddy has given us that, this matching order. That between now and 2032, the attendance must not be less than 40 million membership. Praise the Lord. How many millions? I can hear you. So that is where we are going. And before 2032, we will achieve it. So we are looking from where we are, below 3 million, to look at where we are going, above 40 million. And you must be part of it. So this has brought us here. God himself is saying there is no limitation. If you can look, you will always see where you are going ahead. If you can just look. There is no limitation as far as God is concerned. All things are possible with them that believe. And we believe in God, and this will be possible. And God will use every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So God has given us the mandate to grow. Because in the beginning of this year, the Almighty God himself said that there will be revival in the church. He said there will be revival in the church. And um, that means that God himself is interested and is involved in what we are doing. He had already said it earlier, and that is why we are on it now. 
looking at how to get it done and how to reach out to the nations of the world and to the people around us. That was the prophecy for this year. And God is already there taking us further. When you look at the history of the redeemed Christian Church of God, you will know that the time we have now is a time for us to have a new direction, a new wave. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I can't see the projection. It's not because I need it because it's very, very important. Um, I, I'm, the media I'm already on, it is time for a new wave. It is time for a new wave. There is this wave that is drawn, maybe if it shows us later, um, it shows us how, how CCG started historically and to the level that we are now. And um, when the church started from the inception, the Almighty God began to do a lot of glorious work in this church through the founder. And of course, that took the church to a level where the general overseer took over. And when he took over, he started another wave in this church, which was the wave of the modern churches. And the modern churches, by the special grace of God, broke through several avenues here and there, took the church abroad, and then that took us to Lekki 98. That was, that was a very wonderful, wonderful Holy Ghost Congress that we had then. Uh, and then that turned out CCG to a tourist attraction all over the world. The people were saying, oh, we are such a crowd on this planet's earth. And people began to come and that, you know, advertised the church and move us forward again. And then at that particular time, we were, the church was the happening church. You say you are a member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, you know that you are a phenomenon by every standard. And that continued until that revival began to die down. And then the youth revival came. And then the youth churches came, the youth um, uh, fellowship. And that took us again to another level where we are today. The question is, how do we go to the next level? There must be another wave. There must be something else that has to be done for us to move to the next level that God is taking us to. So this new wave that we are talking about, it is evangelism-driven. Evangelism-driven. Because it is, uh, it is all about evangelism that we achieve 40 million by year 2032. And that is the vision. It is very simple. To grow the membership to 40 million members worldwide by year 2032. And I want you to get that vision in you as we begin to discuss further. It's very simple. And so we know that Everybody will be involved. Then how will it be achieved? What we are saying is that for us to achieve this number of membership, then we need to establish 400,000 units of 100 persons per unit. 400,000 units of 100 persons per unit. And um, a unit, and I want you to please pay attention, every pastor, every worker. This time around, we are dealing with units. A unit consists of 100 persons. Meaning that if there is a parish that the members are not up to 100 persons, they are not up to one unit. So establishing 400,000 units, meaning 
400,000 of a unit that consists of 100 persons per unit will give us 40 million souls by the year 2032 uh, or even before then by the special grace of God. What is the delivery strategy? What are the delivery strategies? The first thing is the publicity. It's the massive awareness in all our parishes, in all our areas, in all our zones, in all our provinces. The Bible says when you see a vision, write it down, make it plain upon the table so that everybody can run with it. If there is no awareness that this is the vision of our Father and the Lord, and every member of the church keys into it, then it remains just under the carpet. So the first thing is awareness, aggressive awareness. Thank God for what the association is doing now, bringing the awareness into the entire region. But this awareness should also go to the provinces, should go to the areas, should go to the parishes, to even all the departments. As at yesterday, RAPAC uh, and some other group in our CCG made their own uh, kind of uh, whatever, publicity of this. The CGOs are doing their own. The regional evangelists are doing their own. The secretaries are doing their own. Departments upon departments, they are looking at it. How can we be part of this uh, assignment and be part of it? So every part of the church must be involved in the awareness of this, um, of this vision. You can even make awareness uh, materials. That we are, wherever you are, you can put it there. You can put a lot of things that will make it uh, easy for people to know. Like we have banners, we have uh, standing banners. We can just get it done that way. And uh, it can always be uh, good in such a way that people, when they enter our churches, they will know what we are doing. They will see it. And they will know that this is our vision. You make it known. Then the approach, another approach that we are still going to do is the paste approach. And paste approach talks about the fact that the units that we have between now and 2032 will be distributed and allocated to, I want you to please listen as fast as you can. I want, to, uh, I want to give you speed, so please get it. These units that I've just mentioned, and I mentioned how many of them? Huh? 400,000, you are very brilliant. Very, very brilliant. If you write jump, you will pass immediately. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 400,000 units. Now, these units will be paced, will be distributed to regions, and it will be done yearly. For example, the one of this year has been distributed to the regions. Okay, out of these units, this year, this is what we are looking at as RCCG. And out of this, this is what Region 2 will deliver by December this year. So we give you the units that you will deliver, and then we prayerfully and diligently work towards it to ensure that, that the GO is not disappointed concerning its expectation concerning our region. And so the region also distribute the units to the provinces, or we also distribute those units to the parishes, areas, and um, as such, under them for... Uh, for them to work for delivery. And that also means that all the parishes now that are not registered, and I want to say that to if your parish is not registered, please go and register because your attendance is not captured in the attendance of the Redeemed Christian Church of God worldwide. 
So if you have a parish, even if you have just started, you can register on our portal and you may not be remitting funds, but your attendance will be captured and it will be added to your province and to the entire region. So it will be part of the units that they are looking for eventually. And then another way to go about it is to set up mobile churches. And mobile churches is talking about taking the church to where people are. Mobile churches taking the church from where the church is to where people are. And those, and those places are places like football fields. On Sunday morning, you can go to football field. You see them playing football there. To the motor parks, to different places. You see all kinds of things there. And what you can do is to go there and ensure that these people, even though they don't come to church, we take the church to them. On Sunday morning, some groups in the church can be sent to different football fields. And when they get there, before they, they begin the playing of the ball, they just gather them together, and then they pray for a few minutes, they charge them, and they move on. And honestly speaking, they will listen to you. All you need is some strategies to get it done. Maybe you get some loaves of bread. Get some, some loaves of bread and all sorts of things, and just, just put it there and say, you want to play ball? Come and eat bread. And before they eat bread, I say, we have to pray on this bread. And then as you pray on the bread, I say, before we will serve the bread, I think man should not live by bread alone. <laughs> but by every word, I proceed from the, word of, from the mouth of the Lord. For 10 minutes, I have to tell you about your God who has provided this bread. The bread is for you, but let us listen to the word of God for 10 minutes. You never can tell what the Lord will do in the next 10 minutes to save those souls. Praise the Lord. And you tell them and say, this thing happens every Sunday. God has sent me to you every Sunday here. So next Sunday, we are going to start by 8 a.m. Since your football will start by 9 a.m., I will be here with bread. <laughs> by 8 a.m. If you are here by 8 a.m., you will eat bread. Praise the Lord. Before you know it, you see, the Bible says that the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violence will take it by force. These people will not come to church, but we take the church to them. They are the car park, they are everywhere. And when they get born again, we can send buses to, that, to those centers and bring them to church. Or eventually we start a parish for them when they grow and they become born again. They will become part of our churches because they will be brought in. So we need to, to think out of box. We need to begin to do church in a very different way to get these people. And if you can do mobile churches, because the attendance there will be harder to the attendance of the mother parish who send the people out on Sundays to various places. When they all those attendants, every on those centers will be added to their own. Another important thing that must be done is pastoral training because there is no way church can grow without training. People that are trained, we know the right thing to do. And that is why there is a book that has been uh, um, written. It's a, it's a compilation of topics that every pastor that is going to pastor a parish or any pastor that has been on a parish also will be part of the training, the man, the message, the ministry. Uh, 10,000 have been printed and that the Jew are paid for it and he said it should be free for every pastor. Uh, I think somebody will clap. And um, the first batch of the training will be for both intended pastors and pastors with less than 100 um, attendants. Those who, we need to train them so that all those ones can also grow and become units. And um, the training will be definitely physical. And people will come together. They need this 
kind of training. Maybe for about two days, there are about, we can meet in our various places and go through the training manual. It is very, very essential. The manual is very, very rich, and it covers at least the major things that anybody that will succeed as a pastor should know at the beginning of his ministerial journey. The other approach is the Operation 111. This operation was called Operation 121 before, but last two months that the GO changed it to 111, 121 before was that a person will win two souls who will be established in the church in one year. But that is said, he went to somewhere and he saw in that church that every member of the church is winning at least one soul in one month. And so, we believe that we can do better. If it's happened anywhere, we can do better here in our, in our CCG. And that is why one member winning one soul in one month is becoming our target now. Every member of our CCG becomes a soul winner. Henceforth, praise the Lord. There is no reason anybody will be born again if you will not be winning souls. And this goes across everybody. No matter work that you are doing in the church, your primary assignment is to do what? Is to win souls. Is to win souls. Is to win souls. If you are an usher, who are you going to usher in when there are no people? If you are a, if you are a chorister, who are you going to sing to if there are no people? If you are a Sunday school teacher, who are you going to teach if you don't have members? So the, the primary assignment of everybody now is that every month you win at least a soul. Praise the Lord. Do we agree? Then the question is that how do we achieve this? That every member will be able to at least win one soul in one month. At least. And that's what I mean at least. When somebody heard of this from a particular country, he called me and he said, for the past two years, I've been trying that, that every member of my church will win souls and nothing has happened. I, I fought them, I charged them, I did everything, but nothing is happening. How do you think you can get it done? With God on our side, it shall be done. Praise the Lord. From the delivery strategies, number one thing there, number one, is that in all our churches, the best thing we should hear as turning everybody to soul winners. And in all our churches, the first thing is create events as opportunities to invite people to church. Meaning what? There are some of our members who can preach Christ to people, who can engage someone, and the fellow will be born again. But there are some who cannot do that, but they are like, uh, what they call it, say Andrew now, who invited uh, Nathaniel and said, I have seen Jesus. They can do that, but then they can invite anybody to church. They can bring anybody and say, something is happening in my church. So what do we do? Let's create events as opportunities for our members to invite their colleagues in the place of work, their uh, peers in school and uh, in marketplaces and say, look, something is happening in my church. Come to my church. And when they come to church, they encounter Christ. The first thing is that people must come to church first. I, I saw a, a, a church, a big one in this country, and I discovered that every time after service, the pastor will say to the, unto them and say, as everybody is going out, pick a flyer there and invite people next Sunday. They know the topic of next Sunday. So we should move from a situation where 
you don't even know the topic of you will preach on, on Sunday that is coming. It's on Saturday evening that pastor begins to think about Sunday morning message. And then till 3 a.m., you have not even found the topic. Talk less of the body. <laughs> and you begin to go around. I think it becomes easier when every Sunday in the month of June, you have already known what, it is, what are we looking at in the month. I mean, first Sunday, of course, first Sunday is Thanksgiving that he preaches. The second Sunday, the third Sunday, the fourth Sunday. And so everybody in the church knows what is coming in that particular month. And it becomes easier if you have a, a, a theme for every Sunday. If you say this Sunday, I mean, this month of, uh, what the, of June is called, the theme is what? Who can, who can suggest one theme? Favor. You like favor, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Divine favor is the month of this one. Maybe the, the second Sunday, you can talk about breaking causes. Because causes are <laughs> opposition to favor. And then second Sunday, uh, thou art highly favored. Then third Sunday, and uh, anointing for favor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then breaking causes, they come to church. Actually, they, they have brought all the causes of their family. But then you have to teach them. You now begin to teach them what are the causes of causes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> what do you do? How, I mean, cause causeless does not stay. So what brought those causes in the first instance? Even though we want to break this one, how will you ensure that you don't, you don't entangle yourself again? And so that will break the yoke of sin, the yoke of immorality and everything in their lives, bring them into restitution, and then set them free and go. And then next Sunday is, thou art highly favored. And then you talk about divine favor. For you to be there, then how do you turn yourself to a favorite of God? Becoming the favorite of God and everything. And then anointing for favor, empowerment to go out and bring souls into the kingdom of God. Because you don't receive anointing just to play. You receive anointing to win souls and to bring people. And then the following month of July, you give it another thing. You split it. And people have these uh, flyers to bring people to church. When they come to church, God will encounter them. And then... Um, there will be multiplication. And then number two is that our pastors should um, seek to operate in the supernatural. Apostle Paul said, my preaching is not in the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit. Even Jesus Christ said, people will not believe except they see signs. We must, supernatural is something that advertises the church. The Bible says that um, these signs shall follow them that do what? That I believe in my name, what will they do? They will cast out devils. They will lay hands on the sick. They will set the captives free. People want to come to church and see the supernatural as what is not happening outside. Of course, they have, they have listened to theories, but they want to see the practical, the conviction. And so every pastor, every minister, every worker should also know that we are in this gospel to be engaged in the supernatural. As. That makes the difference. When Jesus Christ came, people say we have never seen it in this version before. Different from Sadducees and Pharisees. All those ones who are telling stories. But Jesus Christ came, there was manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Manifestation of power of God. And that draws people into the kingdom for them to encounter the sanctifying power of the word of God in their lives. At least something withdraw them. Very, very important. 
And then we should also encourage our members to share testimonies. Very, very important. Testimonies are very important. Very, very important. You know, that is, that is a practical evidence of what God is doing in your church. It is quite important. Quite important. Advertising testimony is very good. Let, you see, the devil does not care whether God does a miracle or not. All he cares about is that the testimony should not be heard. In Acts 4, the Bible said that after, you know, in Acts 3, um, the lame man at the beautiful gate was raised. And then that generated a lot of problems. And then these people met and said, look, how do we ensure? We have seen a notable sign. A miracle has already happened. We can't deny it. But how do we ensure that it does not spread? It's not known. It's not advertised. That's what the devil is all about. Let God is performing a lot of wonders, answering prayers when we come together. People should share testimonies. If not, they will not receive more. He said, give and it shall be given. You give testimonies, God will give you more. You hide it. Will, why must he do it when you will not glorify him? He said in Psalm 50 verse 15. He said, call upon me. He said, in the day of trouble, I will deliver you and you will glorify me. The reason why he will do it is that you will give him the glory. You will advertise him. You will let everybody know, my God can do this. And that will draw somebody to Christ and make him to, to be born again. So it is very important. And also in all of this, we should also engage our teenagers. They must participate because they know much more than we think that they know. Teenagers must become so winners. And that's, you know, so winning as a way of keeping somebody holy and pure. Once we are engaging in the work of God, practical, engaged in the work of God, you begin to live that lifestyle of Christ because you are involved in evangelism. And when we can do boss evangelism, market evangelism, multiple, all these were the things we were doing before. Thank God for the fire conference. There will be a revival. We are just sleeping, brethren. In fact, not that we are sleeping, we are slept. What we just need is for God to wake us up. What is important in the heart of God is no more important in our heart. We have just forsaken the entire work. All we are doing now is church. Church evangelism, in those days, you enter into the bus, the first thing you want to talk is Jesus. You enter into Marua, you talk about Jesus. Okada man carries you, he's in the front and you are at the back. You talk about Jesus, are you born again? The way I'm looking at you, you have problems in your life. Who is he? Who is who? Everybody has problems. The way I'm looking at you, this rider, you have problems. So you have serious problems in your life. But I want to tell you, if you accept my Jesus Christ, he will solve your problems. You are just boasting of your father in heaven. You talk about Jesus Christ. If you die today, where will you go? Everybody that is going on a journey knows where he's going. There are several people in this world who don't know where they are going. If you enter into a bus, you pray. You talk to them. Let us pray. You pray. Everybody in a bus or in a taxi or in a car traveling is afraid. Is afraid of death. So when you say, let us pray, they will give you attention. And some of us in the luxury buses of 50 people, what a congregation. 50 people, congregation, free of charge. To preach to them and let them know, you started this journey. You knew where you were going. You have started the journey of life. Where will you end it eventually? Every opportunity to preach, please, brethren, 
it's time to wake up. And all of us pastors, we are to lead by examples. We are to be all out. There is no big manism in this work. You, everybody must be there. We must be all out doing these things. When we take the lead, people will definitely follow us in this evangelism. Outdoor evangelism, we can go from area to area, do crusades. Zona pastors, area pastors, we can go from parish to parish, do crusades, winning souls, indoor, outdoor. Let there be something happening everywhere. Let there be Christ being preached, every nook and cranny. Let's chase darkness away. If this zone is preaching there, another zone is holding a crusade, another zone is holding a crusade, another zone is holding a crusade. Jesus here, Jesus here, Jesus there. Let us chase away darkness. And it's something that can be done if all of us wake up. And it doesn't take us much. It's just commitment and dedication and rediscovery of our purpose in this Christianity. And know where God wants us to be and where He's taking us to. We will never fail God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Not only that, every parish is also advised to have uh, personnel, maybe that will be making follow-up calls. Follow-up is very important because the rate of retention of members, first-timers, very low. When you look at the turnover, people who attended our parishes, I have the statistics. Millions come, but how many retained? Only few. So let there be follow-up. We are follow-up team, but everybody is involved in the follow-up. But there can be someone also who manages that and then do the follow-up course and then they can also call for prayers here and there. And so that every time with a system, so that anybody who has, who has one time or the other attended our service will be on our system. We can be receiving our messages, our program uh, info, and everything, anywhere they are, so that we don't continue to lose people when they come. The next thing, which is what we are doing this month, is explosive growth drive. And that is uh, to teach people about evangelism. Uh, that started from the beginning of this month, and we are still continuing to the end of this month. We are teaching about evangelism, we are teaching about soul winning, because people become what they hear. If you are not teaching them, and you are just asking them to go and win souls, they can't go and win souls. They become what they hear. Not only what they see, even what they hear, they become. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing. Continuous hearing. And everything we teach, everything we preach, everything still comes back to soul winning. It's attached to soul winning. It's attached to soul winning. Deliverance is attached to soul winning. When he delivered the man, the Bible says the man went everywhere doing what? Publishing it. So Jesus knew this one will advertise me before he even delivered it. You want a deliverance? Are you going to advertise him? Let everything. You have not chosen me, I've chosen you. You want God to answer your prayers? Of course, the same thing. So, and um, the teaching is on now, and it should be followed with practices of going out to ensure that uh, we talk about Jesus Christ, and we do practical evangelism, real practical evangelism. Then I go to the next one, which is the integration of RCF, RCCF, two part I mean, super teens, ESCOs, and youth leaders. Um, uh, it is very important. We get all these ones. We get, we get all these ones. It's not what I sent to you that you are doing, you no, know, the media. It's, <laughs> it's like you, you have something old, old version that you are projecting. 
integration of RCF, RCCF, super teams, ESCOs, and youths. Uh, that one too is there. The delivery strategy, of course, that one is to get all these uh, university students um, where they are and bring them into evangelical streams of the church from the campus. We get them. We get their numbers. Those who are, because when they finish, they become stranded. So from elsewhere, from RCCF, there is a, uh, a forum that is created, a training forum that is called Portrait. This Portrait is a place where they come. Since they, from the campus, the training continues, and then they come together uh, to continue the training. So as, as soon as they finish, they can become wonderful instruments in church planting, in church growth, everywhere, and even also in the mobile churches, in the mobile churches. Let me go to the, um, let me just go to data analysis of present parishes and attendance. If you have it, please, I need you media now, because um, this has to do with data. Data analysis of region two data analysis. Region two data analysis. Now this this data is talking about the attendance. Maybe I will just um, since you cannot project, I will read it from here. The attendance range. And I want you to listen very well. In Region 2, we have 1,461 parishes in this region. And we have the attendance of 88,539 members. 88,539 members in the region. Now, we have this range here. The attendance from of parishes, the parishes with attendance less than nine, all our parishes, the attendance, those one with, uh, with attendance less than 10, less than 10, there are 114 parishes. The attendance between 10 and 50, less than 50, there are 811. The attendance less than 100, between 15 and 99, is 356. The attendance between 100 and 149, less than 150, higher than 100, but less than 150, is 83 parishes. The attendance between 115 and 199, less than 200, is 43. The attendance between 200 and 299 is 28. The attendance between 300 and 399 is 14. The attendance between 400 and 499 is 10. Attendance between 500 and 699, that is between 500 and 700 is seven. Seven parishes have such attendance. Those who have attended between 700 and 1,000, there are four parishes in the region. The attendance above 1,000 is a parish in the region. Now, this tells us the parishes that are less than 50, less than 10, we have 114, less than 10, attendance of two, attendance of three, attendance of four. Attendance of five, of six. And some of them have been there for more than a year, more than two, three, four years, less than 10. 114 parishes. The attendance, the ones with attendance less than 50, there are 811. Remember the whole attendance of the old. Region, the number of parishes is 1,461. 
811 out of them is less than 50. And then 356 is less than 100. Now, if you look at all of these ones, it means that parishes that are less than 100 is 87%. While the parishes that are above 100 is 13%. Parishes that are above 100 are 13%. You can go to the next slide if you are there. Move to the next, then move to the next one. No, go back, go back. All right. Maybe to be clearer here. All right. So you see, we have 13%, we have 885 currently as our units. So our current unit now, and this is where the target comes for this region, our current unit now is 885 units. Now the target for this region is to add to your unit 464 units between now and December. You have 885, you are to add 464. And the recommendation is this, that you grow the parishes that are currently below 50 to 100 members. And then by growing those ones alone, you have already had 224 units. That is uh, about 22,400 souls already added. If only we can grow those ones that are less than 50 to 100. And then those ones that are currently below 100, they can move to 200, then you have added 240 units to your units. Or if we grow 50% of that and plant um, uh, 120 parishes, new ones, then we could also meet up with, with, um, with our target for this year. What we are saying is that your target for this year to add to existing one is 464 units. And then there are strategies there. We have a lot of parishes that are below 50. If those one, with little, little things, we can give them little, little things. Some of them is just the microphone. Some of them is just a local drum. Some, some of them is just this. Something that can motivate them and they grow. It's high time we grew this particular, this uh, category of parishes to the level that they should be so that they can become units, grow all of them to units. We just discovered that Region 2 just achieved its, its target very easily and very, very easily. My prayer is that you will be the first region to deliver. I didn't hear a louder amen. Yeah. So these are the things that we can just do and uh, achieve the, the targets that are be given to us. And in doing this, it means that provinces will do it and our structure must be working. A zonal pastor is not a, is, is not a successful man until every pastor under you have succeeded. An area pastor is the same thing. It's not just the area headquarters. All the parishes under you must become a unit before you can say that you have already delivered. So it is very important that we begin to move into it and let's see what, how it goes. Go to the next slide, please. Are you sure this is the next slide? All right. At the next slide, it also shows us some analysis. I leave those things with, the, with them. And this is um, Lagos Province 13 in sight. Lagos Province 13 has 131 parishes and then 10,506 average attendance. They have between zero and parishes less than 50 in attendance, you have 75. Parishes less than 100, but more than 50, you have 32. 
parishes above 100, about less than 200, you have 13. Parishes that are between 200 and 500, you have 9. 500 and 1,000, you have 1. Above 1,000 to 2, you have 1. Above 2,000, we believe that you will get there next month miraculously. That fellow say louder, amen. amen. If your amen is louder at the end of this year, your parish will not be less than 5,000. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do you believe that God can do it? Because Prof, Lagos Prophet 13 has the highest members. That is why he, we brought uh, he, something into this one. But let us look at how provinces contributed to this uh, number of uh, parishes less than 50. The next slide, please. Less than 50. Lagos Province 50, for example, has 110 parishes that are less than 50. Lagos 85 has 94. Lagos 69 has 91. Lagos 87 has 87. Uh, Lagos 87 has 87. <laughs> Lagos 80, 51 has 80. Lagos 95 has 78, and then Lagos 13 as 75, 84 as 71, Lagos 14 as 66, Lagos 56 as 65, Lagos 8 as 60, and Province 9 as 48 parishes that are less than 50. So when you look at these ones, I, we just have to do something about them. They, are, they look like a burden to us now, but then they are raw materials for growth. They are potentials for growth. If we work on these ones, they will help us to achieve our targets as easily as possible. And they can grow. Some, somebody called me once and said, ah, uh, he gave a particular parish that has 15 people in attendance some loaves of bread. <laughs> And that very Sunday, the attendance rose to 75. Ah, the, the provincial pastor said, eh, I give you more next Sunday then, so that you continue to rise. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you all that CSR is one of the things that can grow church. You see, every problem in society is an opportunity for church to grow. There is hunger in society now. Apart from the fact that one of the things that we make us to make heaven is to give people food. The Bible said, when I was hungry, you did not feed me. But I've heard some people say that if you use food to bring them to church, you just turn them to rice, rice believers. Ah, Bible, when Jesus Christ called us, he said that we follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. Then go and learn how fishermen catch their fish. If you just take hook, you throw hook alone into the water, are you going to get fish? You must put what? You must put food that the fish really likes. And so when the fish sees the food and is running to come and eat the food, then he get hooked. That is why sometimes when you just declare a feast in the church and you call people... People will not come to church, they come because of food. So they came for food, they met with Jesus. At least something must bring them to church for them to hear your message. You have a fine message, a wonderful message, but how would they hear? Whatever we can do to bring people to church as they come, I have seen that happening several times. They stay. We do... Jesus market. Everybody, whatever you are not using at home, you bring them to church. Fridge, freezer, pressing iron, uh, cooler, whatever. And some people have the needs. They will come to church. When they carry such, they will be forever happy. They will remain in your church. 
and is part of the CSR, Christian Social Responsibilities. Let's just think out of box. And the day they come, let, let them encounter Christ before they go into the market. Region 2 we deliver first. I didn't hear a louder amen. No. I said region 2 we deliver first. I don't know in region 2 the center that we deliver first. Let that, let, let that center say the loudest amen. Praise the Lord. Even though I cannot hear from other centers, but I know you, God will measure your amen also. <laughs> then region 2 data analysis, I think we have done that. All, all I'm just saying, the last one there is talking about uh, zero to ten members. Uh, when you have the provincial count, those ones that are less than ten, in Lagos province starting, you have eight. Legal province 50, you have 10. And I think all this one less than 10, we, they, you should declare emergency on them. State of emergency. For a parish to be less than 10 people, it needs to declare state of emergency and grow them. They have potential to grow, and they will grow in Jesus' name. But we have 10 top parishes who are the seed of life, as 1,305 is the biggest parish in the, in the entire region. Followed by Mercy Land, 877. Followed by in uh, Province 14. The first one is in Province 13. Followed by Divine Assembly, 854, Lagos Province 30. And then followed by the Master's Place, 814, Region 2 Headquarters. White Chapel, 746. Jesus Sanctuary, headquarters, 663. Jesus Embassy, 644. Provincial headquarters, 621 of Province 51. New Life, 603. Lagos Province 14. Overflowing Mega, 582. Lagos Province uh, 85. Lagos Province 85. So all we are saying is that looking at our statistics, we believe that we can work on these statistics and ensure that we deliver our units. What is the message? By the end of this year, this region, by the special grace of God, will be adding nothing less than how many units? Four what? 464. I said you are brilliant people. You don't even forget anything. 464 units. And um, by December, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will have more than that. And when you have more than that, it shall be posted into the next year for you, the target of the next year. And I believe that you can actually do more than that. You can... Uh, win souls. With God on our side, it is more than, I mean, it is forever possible. Uh, what do we do to get it done? Another thing is prayer, because it's only God that can touch the souls of men. We need to pray more than ever before. We pray people into salvation. We pray people into sanctification. We pray people into the church. I think we need to revive our prayer altar. For souls. These days we pray for several things. We hardly pray for souls anymore. Everybody prays for this, prays for that. But how many people are praying for souls? And that is where we are getting it wrong. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing will be added unto you. If you can begin to pray for souls, you see the heaven opening over you. Because when you are concerned about the things of the kingdom, heaven will be concerned about your life. Just shift your focus. Change gear. Focus on the things of the kingdom. Prove him. Even prove this word of God and see how it works and see things happening in your life and see God taking over your own destiny also. And it shall be well with us in Jesus' name. So we have gotten to pray. We raise people to pray for souls in all our parishes. Let there be special prayers, special groups, prayer chains, 
forming prayer chains to pray for souls to come to church. People will dream in the night and say they are coming to church and they will be there in the morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That is the power of prayer. Authority of prayers. And people who come to our church will not just come and go. They will come and they will stay. If only we can pray. And to get all these things done, everybody must cooperate. The message must be from the throne of grace. The choir must sing inspirational song that will touch lives. All shares must be up to their duty. I mean, uh, cheerful, bringing. So even from the gates, meeting the ushers alone, somebody falls in love with your church. So it's everybody. The Sunday school teacher, the children departments must be powerful. There are some parents who stayed in the church because their children love the children department. And that is why you cannot play with the children department. It must be good. It must be nice. It must be contemporary. It must be something that fits into the days that we are in. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. All in all, the Lord will support us. Everyone will back us up. For us, there is nothing impossible. And with the, with the grace of God upon our lives and upon this church and upon our Father and the Lord, we will get it done in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen, it shall be done. Amen. The zeal of the Almighty God will accomplish this. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7 say, It shall be done in Jesus' mighty name. At the year 2032, when the vision will be delivered, you will still be alive. You will be strong. You will be healthy. You will be part of it. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God will use you. Every month, you will not default in Jesus' name. It is time to shine. It is time to move to the next level. Our CCG, we must wake up. This is a wake-up call to every member and to everyone. And this vision will be monitored every month. Results will be given so that the parishes or the provinces that are not doing it will automatically be seen, and those that are doing it will be rewarded accordingly by the special grace of God. And I believe in the name of the Lord, nobody will take your own position in this particular vision. Together, we shall get it done, and God will support us. God bless you. Thank you very much for listening to us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. I don't know whether I can take one or two questions, if there are two, or we pray. If there is any that is written down, we have two. All right, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Daddy. The first question here says, um, we appreciate the special teachings that um, have been taking place this month in all our parishes. It is tagged Explosive Growth Drive. Um, it, is, it has been taking place for this month. Please, Daddy, can we have a repeat of it for one more month um, so that this month of May we just lay the foundation, then in the month of June that we are about to enter now, so that um, we can go into the practical aspect of it, um, laying more emphasis on the fact that we need to go out in all our parishes. That's not question number one. The second question says, um, concerning this vision 2032, Daddy, there is no doubt about the fact that we need funds to run with this vision and to run effectively and efficiently. Um, the question is, um, are we going to be assisted by the provinces, regions, and um, are we going to be assisted from national? So that um, it, there's no doubt about the fact that uh, we need funds to achieve this vision. These are the questions, sir. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. As to extension 
of the EGD month, that's Explosive uh, Growth Drive month, um, it's just a prototype. Anybody who is a provincial pastor, a parish pastor, you know, you can even extend it for three months. To drive in, it's just to drive us into the vision. You know what to do because you must succeed. And for you to succeed, people must catch this vision. There is no point coming to church if you are not going to do the will of God. And there is no point getting congregations so many and they are not productive in the kingdom of God, particularly in the sight of God. If you know a month is not going to be enough, you, are, you have the liberty to extend. You have the liberty to extend. We have it nationally, we have it in the month of May and then in the month of uh, October. But everybody has the liberty because if you don't teach them continually, they want to shift attention, everybody shifts attention. They forget about it. And you will discover that when you teach your people about prayer, they begin to pray. You teach them about uh, this, they begin, until you teach them about soul winning, nobody will win souls. And this one is practical. You don't teach them alone, you take them out and lead them in soul winning. And with that, everybody will get used to it, and uh, anywhere they go, they begin to think about it. So you have the liberty to please extend it in your various parishes and um, provinces and domains. Then on the issue of the funding of the growth, the first thing you need to know is that what do I need money for? What do I, what do I want to do with the money? That's the first thing. Because people who talk about money, they, if you ask them, what do you need money for? They cannot even tell you why. Everything needs money in life. Everything. But I want to tell you, brethren, when you say national, who is to redeem? You are the redeem. Who is national? Whatever money, little that we are remitting to the national, let's ask the regional pastor here, our daddy here, he will tell you how many churches we have all over the world. 197 nations of the world. And I want to let you know, all these nations are sponsored from Nigeria. If you think any money is coming from America or coming from UK, it's a lie. We are sending money there from here. Missionary everywhere, we are sending money there from here. I just came back from Malaysia. They still send money there. They are sponsoring them there. And so from what? It's from the little that we are contributing to the center. So is it from that little that we do everything for, for us? Then why are we there? I love what Region 2 is doing now. At least I, I got to know. That sacrificial giving going on. I think I'm correct. Abisa? In some of the provinces. Okay, I thought it's, I thought it's everywhere. In, in some of the provinces now, if you do sacrificial giving, you just have to think out of box. You can run the church on tight. You can grow the church on tight. It's not, you can even build parish on tight. When you give a tight, a tight is what? It's 10% of what? Of the income. Let me give you an example. If your parish gives a tight of 100,000, 100,000 in a month, what does that one tell you? Hmm? What was the total income in the, into the pocket of the faithful titers? One million. Remove 100,000. Eh? 900,000 is still remaining. At least something like that. Out of 900,000, somebody who, who has vision and the church are so winners and they are committed to the work of God when there is a need, out of that, they can still afford to sacrifice 100,000. 
and they will not die because they will still be left with 800,000. When this vision came up, I told my people, I said, what do we do? They, they said from that month, from the month of March, when they give tithes, they will begin to give another tithe, another 10% for church growth. And they will continue that until we achieve what we want to achieve. And they have been faithful to it. They give tithes, 10%, and they give another one, making 20%. And then with 80% that God blesses, you will still prosper. Apostle Paul said, I will spend and be what? And be spent. The reason, the problem is that we don't, we only preach giving, we don't want to give anymore. And there is no way to break through. You can pray from here to tomorrow, you will still be poor until you learn how to give sacrificially. I will spend and be spent. And that is what it takes. So we can begin to look at the national. How many people will national from where? From where? We have, the people are there. All it takes is for everybody to have a vision of church growth. Just a vision. When we share that, uh, that vision, somebody came to me and said, I'm sponsoring a parish. I want to start a parish on my own. I never knew, and I never knew a young sister, very young sister. I never knew her such, such, I mean, such money. But you just felt, oh, this is a laudable vision. I want to sponsor this. I want to sponsor that. Somebody said, okay, I will give you money to buy rice and cook. Somebody said they will buy this one. Somebody. You just discover that people are bringing in to support the vision. When there is a vision, there will be a provision. All you need to do is to drive the vision and let people that God has given to you support the vision. And from whatever level, whatever, I mean, the uh, resources in the provinces, definitely. Like I call people, I say, you, this parish, what do you need? This one said, I need this one. I said, okay, if I give it to you, are you going to give me a unit? He said, yes, sir, I promise you. You will sign an undertaking. No. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I give you this, you, he said, yes, I will give you, you, I will give you, you, okay, fine. I will see how I can attend to your needs, if not all, but to a particular extent, and everybody must deliver. All I'm saying is that we need to think out of box, look inward, and don't look outward. The people that will finance your vision, they are around you. And God has sent them to you. And if they are not there, once you catch this vision, God will send them to you. All it takes is the will. When there is a willing heart, there will be a support from heaven. And God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to believe that with this little word of mine, I've been able to convince you and not confuse you that region 2 will deliver first this year in the mighty name of the Lord. Shall we please rise to our feet and just pray one or two prayers? Just pray two prayers, two prayers. And anywhere you are, you can please pray this prayer. Let's lift up our voice and say, Father. Father. It can be louder. Say, Father. Father. Every yoke of stagnation in our parishes, Lord, destroy it right now. Release the spirit of expansion. In the mighty name of the Lord. Please go ahead and pray that prayer. Let's pray that prayer. Let's pray that the yoke of stagnation be destroyed. Completely. 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 Let's pray for a fire of revival. In the heart. Revival of evangelism. Revival of soul winning. In all our parishes, in all our zones, in all our areas, in all our provinces. Let the fire of evangelism, the fire of revival begin right now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God, send down the fire. And destroy every yoke of stagnation. This is the time for explosive growth. For Christ to be known all over the world. For Christ to be advertised. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take over, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Please pray this last prayer. Say, Father. 
everything that I need to be profitable in this venture. Release, release it upon me right now. Pray unto the Almighty God. The anointing that you need, the fire that you need, the power that you need, the grace that you need, the wisdom that you need, the backing of the Lord that you need, that God will give it to you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. The Lord will answer you by fire. Oh, the Lord will answer you by fire. Every yoke of stagnation in your parish is destroyed right now. We relay the fire of revival. Before this conference we finish, fresh fire on everyone in the mighty name of the Lord. We pray that after this conference, nobody will be comfortable, not winning souls in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I speak in the name of the Lord Jesus to your destiny. Whatever you need to be profitable in the kingdom of God, the grace, the wisdom, the anointing, the fire, receive in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You will not lack the grace. Even the resources, receive in Jesus' name. God will send you ministry helpers. Oh, he will send you destiny helpers. You will not lack the resources in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I pray for region two. Miraculously, you will be the best and the first to deliver. You will have more than enough. You will not only hit the target, you will exceed in the mighty name of the Lord. God will enable you. The grace will be sufficient. And you will be alive in 2032 when success will be celebrated in the mighty name of the Lord. If Jesus Christ tarries, you will be alive. And nobody will take your place. And the kingdom of God, when people will be rewarded, faithful soul winners will be rewarded, nobody will take your crown in the mighty name of the Lord. Together, we shall make it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. A bigger amen. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Please, I want you to stretch your hands towards our Father and the Lord and begin to pray for him. He has prayed for us. He has blessed us. He came specially for us. Please talk to the Lord concerning him, that it will be well with him, with his family, that in the ministry, that God will open doors for him. As he has talked to us about this drive, that the Lord will rekindle fire for him too. That everywhere he goes, that he will touch lives. Please, let's talk to him. Let's talk to the Lord. That this assignment, in his own time, that it will be accomplished. And the name of God will be glorified. Please, let's pray for him. That he goes to a lot of places. He has just told you he has just come back from somewhere. That the Lord will always make way for him. Granting him journey mercy, whether it's in the air, whether it's on the road, whether it's on water, 